Okay, everyone, a warm welcome back to the channel. We're off on our travels again. Where are we going, Helen? We're going to Fox Hills, which is a little private site, adult only, I think. Um, near Way Wayborn, isn't it? Wayborn, yeah. North Norfolk. We're going to get right on our way now. See you when we get there. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Shocked. <laughs> You're right. Uh -huh. Look at all the berries on these bushes. Ours is like that at home. Mm. It's pretty quiet. Even oh, there's a few. There are some hard standing bushes, but I've got one. Can't remember. Alright, you'll have to go to reception, darling, and do the clerical. Where is it? Yeah. Reception. Right ahead, look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's us all set up here at Fox Hills. Cracking pitch. Let's give you a quick 360 here, actually. That's the uh, entrance in. A number of grass pitches here. Some hard standing pitches, I think, further around on the back bit over there. And then we've got a pitch. And all the pitches are named after birds. This one's called Robin that we are on. Reception's just over there, by the, the owner's house. Some more pictures actually through there as well. I'll work out and let you know shortly how many pictures there are here. We're very close to the beach. Um, the village of Wayborn, well there's a nice pub. Some lovely walks. And uh, across the road, actually, there's a main road just outside the site. You might see a car go by now. But it's not, it's not too bad in terms of noise, but... There's a big woodland walk through there, which we might attempt tomorrow with a bit of luck. Lovely grapevine here, Helen. Uh, 
how beautiful. Some outdoor sinks here, look, do your wash up. Toilets. There's toilets here, but no showers. But plenty adequate and 20 pounds a pitch. Two pounds for an awning, a pound for a dog. It's cute, isn't it? And this is your reception. It's just a, a table outside. But it's great. I love it. What's the point just there? Bins. And a nice little pitch here called Robin. And there's a bird on the pitch now. Oh, here she is. Oh, what? You are the bird. Uh, there's a bird and a dog. Hello, little miss. What are you doing, miss? Bell? What's that? Well, it's getting on for ooh, half six, seven o'clock in the evening. And we've just come for a little stroll down the beach. Might just go for a pint at the ship in a moment. There's been quite a nice sunset, which we've just missed, so. This is the remnants of it.
a little bit of aerial activity last thing this evening c-130 hercules is coming over i can hear some jets as well Rubbish light again, but there's the second Herc. Not the same one, it's a different one. A little bit of night exercise going on. I think they might well be from Mildew Hall because we often see them coming over here. Well, I normally enjoy a ghost ship when I have a beer, but I have found this, um, and it's not new, I've seen it before, I've had it before. Woodford's Wherry uh, Amber Ale, which they're selling in Tesco's. Now, you might be able to pick up in the background. That Hercules that we mentioned on the beach, there's two of them, and um, they're sort of circling around and they're coming right over the top of our heads. And we think the reason for that and the low flying aircraft today is where a camp town is actually an old military base, hence the tank museum behind, which I'm going to go to tomorrow. Um, but it's an old military base, and we think that's why they fly over it as part of their training. And when we've tracked them before, we've seen them fly over this way, haven't we, on the radars and stuff? Yeah. Ten over the sea. Yeah. Ten to eight. We thought we'd have a drink outside. Well, I've got hot chocolate. Dave's got uh, beer. Mm. Oh, there's some geese here. I think they're geese. Yeah, we keep hearing them. Yeah, they're especially at night and in the morning. So, I mentioned in my previous video about the night's roaring. It's been dark for about 20 minutes now, isn't it? Proper yeah. dark and it's 10 to 8. But we sat out here last night. I, I managed to stay out a bit longer than Helen. She had to have a hot water bottle and a blanket, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and um, we realised very quickly why this place is called Fox Hills. Because over there, which is towards the main road, there's a public footpath. It's quite hilly and, and lots of trees and there's foxes in there. But there's also another hill just over this side. And I sat out here last night and the noise of the foxes was in incredible. So that must be where the name comes from. Maybe we'll get to chat to the owners foxes and find out. Foxes on the hill. Yeah, two hills and foxes. So Anyway, Helen, what do you reckon to it here? I quite like it actually. It's £21 a night. We've paid 63 for three nights. Um, there's no showers. No. There's toilets which are perfectly adequate. Um, they're clean. There's outside basins if you want to wash up isn't it? Do you wash ups yeah? yeah. The reason it's £21 by the way because we have to pay a pound for floss pot here don't we? Yeah. So it's a pound for your dog. If it was just the two of you with your on your pitch then it would just be £20. But what we have found out is you've got to pay a little bit extra for your awning and technically this is not an awning. £2 a day I think for the awning. Yeah so I don't know if we were supposed to pay for this or not. But the owners have been out cutting the grass today and, and they're very pleasant. Oh, they're lovely. Extremely pleasant, yeah. We got such a warm welcome, didn't we? Yeah, we did. From the lady, I can't remember the lady's name now, but I'll put it underneath if I remember. But what a lovely welcome we got. And, I, and all the pictures, I think we mentioned this already, all the pictures are named after different birds. So we're on Robin, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, I've had a look round. They're all nice pictures, but I think. This could be the best one. This is a good pitch. Yeah. So the sun comes around sort of in the morning from this side all the way around in front of us and then just sets on the other side of the caravan, uh, more or less sort of. So the caravan was actually quite warm today, wasn't it? Oh, it's it? lovely. Yeah. Really nice. So we're just doing three nights here. Can you hear the geese? Oh. So we're just going to do three nights here. It's nice and quiet here though, isn't it? It is, yeah, a little bit of road noise, but it's not a lot. It's not the busiest road on the planet. It's not a motorway. It's quite a narrow, I think it's the A149. It's quite a narrow road, but you get a little bit of traffic, but you might have heard a car go by then. It's not too bad at all. It doesn't bother you, does it? So very peaceful, yeah. I think the Hercules is on the way back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll do three nights here, and then we're moving on. But we'll reveal where we're going and what we're doing when we've got there. Next one's just a one-night stop hop. Isn't it? Yeah, it's literally to break up a longer journey we've got planned. Would you come back here? Yes, I think I would, and it's open all year, so that gives you the option mm. to come back in the winter if you want to. 
Yeah, it's open all year and um, it's adult only, as I think we might already have mentioned. And, and you can have dogs, of course. Yeah, bring your dog. Pound a day. And I haven't counted the pictures. You said you thought there was 39 pictures. I think 39 you? rings a bell, but I've booked so many lately. I think it might be. But I'll try and work that out and I'll put a yeah. little bit of text underneath how many pictures. A um, lot of grass, but there are some hard sanded pictures as well. So if you are going to come here in the winter time, then you'll be fine. Here comes the Herc. Is there more than one? Just no, the one. just one. So another reason why I like it here, because it's got a little bit of a military feel. As you know, if you follow our channel regularly, we do like the aeroplanes. Anyway then, Helen, I reckon that pizza, has it been in 12 minutes yet? Oh, blame me, the pizza. <laughs> We're going to pizza and a beer, and it's so mild, you know, we just sat outside. So. Honestly, it's a good job I'm here, we would have beaten burnt food. As they say on Well Deck Diaries, a right nice point. People sometimes ask, what is it we like about caravanning? Well here you go. This for a start. We're only five minutes walk from the car and a five minute drive from our campsite, but Right, we're just off to try and catch the steam train from a distance hopefully but look at these lovely colors in the heathers and the gauze beautiful morning all. Dave on his lonesome, just leaving the campsite actually and uh, right next door is the Muckleborough tank collection which I just want to have a little look at. I'm not going to bore you with lots of video of tanks and stuff so stay tuned whatever you do but I just thought I'd show you in case you're interested just a few little clips. But this is how close it is, I get a load of this. Literally just walking out of the site. By the way I do like this gate, I'll just show you this cracking sign on the gate and as we've already mentioned if you stay here you will hear lots of foxes now look at this look this is how close we are right next door an old military base I'll put a little map up here which shows that there used to be a runway here so clearly probably wartime this was a uh, an RAF base so it's called the Muckleborough collection it used to be called the Muckleborough tank museum but um, they've changed it to the Muckleborough collection because it's more than just tanks as you will see in a moment and there's their website and just over here um, that gives you an indication that you've arrived it says no dogs uh, that's not strictly true um, dogs aren't allowed into the um, exhibition but they have got provision for dogs by way of kennels that you can put your dog into so campsites literally over that fence there Helen don't fancy it today, she's reading a book, so I'm just going to take a walk down. 
Now just to the left here, see the hill? There's some pathways and walkways apparently. I've not been there yet. Might try a bit later. Pathways and walkways anyway through there. It's called Muckleborough Hills. And uh, they lead down to the beach but also go around the perimeter of this um, old military base where you can see guns and uh, radio masts and satellite dishes and stuff. Over here on the right, this looks like the old sort of uh, military camp, doesn't it? The old camp. Right, getting close to the museum. Look at this thing on the left. If you walk down the beach, or walk along the beach from uh, Weybourne towards um, Kelling, then these are quite prominent. Some big old sort of radar detection system. The remains of a some field guns here. Very quiet. Big car park at the end, so there might be a few cars down here. Not many people will, will have walked it. Literally, the campsite is behind those trees there, look, so couldn't get much closer, could you? The ZPU towed anti aircraft gun, four 14.5 millimeter machine guns with a range of 1.5 miles, manufactured from 1966 and still in use. Still in use. Crime. Can't imagine they're still in use, but they must be. Look at this one, this is gigantic. I'll show you this. It goes on forever. That's one big gun. 1942 USA 155mm M1 gun, the Long Tom. It weighs 15 tonnes. The shell was 100 pounds, 14.7 miles. Oh, no wonder it's big. 40 rounds an hour that, can sh that could fire. That's big. So big, I can't get it in to the frame. Maybe if I just zoom out a bit, Dave, try that. There you go. That's a big gun. We like big guns. Right, let's get in the place. So that's the view back. Now, what I've learned since I've been in there is that actually what this place was during the war was, uh, uh, can you hear the steam trains, by the way? That's the steam trains. They run from Holt back to Sheringham down the coast. And there's a, a stop at Weybourne, which is just over there in the trees. Um, too far to pick it up, but I can see steam over there. Um, yeah, this is an anti-aircraft base, is what it was. So this is all about reconnaissance and detection of aircraft uh, coming in over the seas from Europe. Obviously, um, had a camp here. But that was brilliant. So this is the uh, German V1 flying bomb uh, with a pulse jet engine giving a range of 160 miles at 400 miles an hour delivering 1,900 pounds Amatol warhead. Seen these in the movies folks in the old black and white footage of the war. Was it called a doodle bug or something? Might have been. And then over here, Hawker Siddeley Harrier, there we go, that's a GR3. Came in service in 1966 with a Pegasus engine, given 21,800 pounds of thrust, maximum speed of 735 miles an hour, the range of 2,000 miles. Obviously had the vertical takeoff. I said VTOL earlier, it's VSTOL, V-S-T-O-L. Let's have a quick look, see if we can see in the cockpit of this. <coughs> Obviously no engines in it, but not even got a seat in it anymore, but uh, it's got the remains of the ejector seat there. Not a lot of space, if you were flying that, not a lot of space to move. But this is by far, far the closest I've ever been to a Harrier jump jet.
Well, it was superb, absolutely worth every penny. Loved having a look around the military collection here at Muckleborough, and I would recommend it to anybody.